Sometimes, an organism living in an ecosystem doesn't belong. Brought by humans either intentionally or on accident, introduced species can sometimes wreak havoc, bringing a balanced ecosystem crashing down, becoming what is known as an invasive species. For example, prior to human vessels crossing the waves, the volcanic Hawaiian Islands in the center of the Pacific Ocean could only be reached by animals and plants blown in on the wind or floating in on the currents. So only a few creatures arrived on the virgin igneous shores. Over time, the animals and plants that arrived diversified and became unique to the islands. Then humans arrived, crossing the sea, with first the Polynesians who brought a few hardy foreign plants and animals from Southeast Asia and other parts of the Pacific, and then the Europeans who brought organisms from every corner of the globe. One of the most infamous invaders was the mongoose. These little carnivores were brought in to control the introduced rat populations, which fed on the introduced sugarcane crop, but instead ate the eggs of the native Nene goose, nearly driving the species to extinction. People also brought exotic birds, which now outnumber the dwindling native bird populations, the calls of various Asian, European, and American birds filling the air. Native birds are only found in a few remote places where invasive mosquitoes carrying foreign diseases haven't been able to reach yet. Another but smaller scale example of invasive species is in Grand Teton National Park. Out in this spectacular landscape of high rocky peaks and American bison is a small unassuming spring, Kelly Warm Springs. Not much more than a pond, it stays warm even in the heart of the cold Wyoming winters. This geothermal spring was once only home to native minnows that had swum up from the Snake River. But at some point in the 1960s, someone released some guppies here. These hardy fish are well known for their ability to breed rapidly, and they soon became common in the spring. But they were only the first exotic invader here. Over the coming decades, green swordtails, a larger cousin of the guppy, goldfish, and convict cichlids were all released into these waters and quickly multiplied. Goldfish can survive in cooler waters, and convict cichlids are aggressive and rapid breeders, exhibiting parental care over the fry. These fish directly compete with the native minnows, and several species have declined as these exotic fish establish themselves. Besides the more flashy and visible tropical fish, some other exotic life forms have also been dumped. Two notorious aquarium snails, the ram's horn and the Malaysian trumpet snail, also both took over the springs. In fact, the snails became so prolific they altered the CO2 emissions from Kelly Warm Springs. But after decades of invasive tropical fish in this little corner of a national park, a removal program has finally begun. After the discovery of goldfish, where near waters from the spring meet the Snake River, the park feared that exotic fish might spread beyond and threaten native trout populations. And if this program is successful, none of these invaders will remain. Even more examples of invasive species destroying ecosystems are not uncommon. They have occurred all over the world, from Lake Victoria in the heart of Africa to American backyards. They have caused extinctions, population declines of many native species, and economic damage. Removing an established population of invaders is often impossible, and the best strategy to stop these invasions is prevention. <laughs>